If I say the word Vietnam, what comes to mind for you? That's a question I ask people in person. So obviously I'm not going to be able to hear your answer, but if you wanted to put it in the comments below, I'd be interested in hearing. My name is Kat Fitzpatrick, and I have been writing about Vietnam for over a decade. It's not a subject I actually wanted to write about. It was something that came to me that after many times of telling people, it's not a subject I wanna write about, even though I have a journalism degree, and even though I lived there as an eight-year-old just before the fall of Saigon, I just didn't wanna take on the subject. Today is April 29th, 2024. It is the 49th anniversary of the eve of the fall of Saigon. So on tomorrow, 49 years ago, the U.S. pulled out of Saigon in a terrible defeat. If you were alive at that time, you know what that meant to our country. If you weren't alive or were too young, like me almost, to remember, it was a turning point in our nation's history. And I don't take writing about it or talking about it lightly. And in fact, I would really rather be talking about getting kids outside for outdoor education or writing my funny novels, my Kathmandu novels. But again, in 2012, over a decade ago, I felt like I was called upon to tackle the subject of Vietnam. This plaque is a plaque that was given to my father after he helped or helped, he, he led an evacuation of over a thousand people, well, approximately a thousand. It was 938 according to one of his letters and one of his compatriots said that they felt like they had oh, 1300. So you don't really know the exact number, but it was a lot of people who as of tomorrow, 49 years ago, no longer had a country. They were safer becoming refugees going to America than they were staying in South Vietnam. I don't think any of us who either participated or who um, are just learning about it can imagine what it felt like to completely lose your country. We lost soldiers, we lost we lost our uh, dignity, really. Um, and there were some people who completely lost their country. It did, of course, have um, relations with Vietnam have been normalized. And so people can go back and visit. But the loss of an entire country, one that we, the United States, were supposed to take care of. I, even though my dad was able to rescue people, was able to usher them to a whole new life in the United States, which was, of course, so challenging for them. Um, I know he still suffered under that feeling that he was dedicated to a government that he believed in. He was in the CIA for 25 years. He, deep in his heart, believed in the United States, the United States government. And when Saigon fell, when everything fell apart, that he was trying so hard to uphold. It was a devastating blow for him. So of course that emanated into our family in different ways. Um, and I can't even begin to speak in this short video about what it did to our country. Um, and again, I don't take the subject lightly. It is not something that I really, really want to tackle, but I have been given some amazing resources. My father left notes of his evacuation. My mother wrote home from Saigon to her family in Idaho, explaining the day-to-day, -day, taking the kids to the doctor, going out on family trips to the beach, and then, oh, by the way, there's a Viet Cong at um, Jim's office. My dad was James Welch at Jim's office, or and they probably know where we live. So there I was as an eight-year-old living in a city in which the Viet Cong were very active. One Marine told me that he had, when he found out that I was there as a child after 1973, when all the soldiers pulled out, he said, wow, Saigon, that was the most dangerous time to be there. 
that was in a conversation in um, probably about 2013 or 14. And that was when I really began to realize like, oh my goodness, it wasn't just that we were living in this city, the strange city um, we had just moved there, but that it was genuinely dangerous for us as Americans. And one of my let my mom's letters, she actually mentions we couldn't go visit a nearby city because it was get Americans day. Meaning had we been there as a family, very conspicuous Americans in a, in a foreign country, um, we could have easily been taken out in honor of get Americans day. We were living in a country in which we were the enemy and we were bringing in negative forces. Oh, I just had lost a light. I'll keep talking, even though it's a little dark, maybe I'll begin to wrap it up. But um, so tomorrow is the 49th anniversary of the fall of Saigon. Over the next year, I am going to wrap up my Vietnam project. Very excited about that. Again, um, the thing that's so interesting is even though it's been a tough subject to tackle, even though it's been heartbreaking, even though I still cry every time I read a chapter about the veterans and I will spend some time reading from my book that I, I did finally pull together. Um, and there's just so many bad stories about Vietnam, but there are also some good stories. And as we're getting far enough away from it, many of the, the pains are being addressed. Our soldiers were not welcomed home one slogan from, um, oh, I'll bring it up later, but one of the slogans was like, coming home should not be the worst part of war. war. So this tragedy that took place when we sent our sons, our brothers, our fathers overseas to a strange place to fight for our democracy, for our freedom. And then when they came home, we did not welcome them. That is the greatest tragedy of all. So we're all in this together. We're all needing to, to form the future that we want for ourselves and our families. And addressing Vietnam is one of those things that I think ought to be done as the 50th anniversary um, approaches in 2025. And again, as I was called up to write about it, and it's been a fight, I wrote this little thing, book that it's a chat book, it's just 3000 words, but I, I meant to use it as a teaching tool. It's, um, it's just about, it's been a fight to write. And obviously, I have a demeanor that doesn't look like I'm fighting, but um, I have struggled with it. But I'm glad that I've kept at it. And because each of the stories I just realized I have this crazy, uh, now I have a crazy shadow behind me. But each time I speak with people, somehow um, just giving the subject attention or hearing their stories, uh, it just opens up a little more of a brighter future. So again, I'm Kat Fitzpatrick. I am dedicated to the subject of Vietnam through April 30th, 2025. And I do hope that you'll join me in the journey. I'll be posting videos about my writing process, about the things that I've written, about other things people have, things that other people have written that I can share. And so that we can commemorate this passage of time in as many ways as possible and bring from it perhaps some learning and some wisdom that we can move forward into the uh, future with. Thanks for spending this time with me, and I do hope you take care. Until next time.